there's hundreds and hundreds of different business models. And what we really do is we take a kind of a systematic approach by using the business assessment. Many people like to keep their other job or business. Many of us out here are real estate professionals. So obviously you have a flexible schedule. So really it's about aligning and finding the right business, doing enough discovery, and then putting all this together and then um, you know going through and doing all the due diligence. And, and during this process, it's really a discovery process. So I always tell people that, that, look, it doesn't cost you any money in the beginning to go through these business models. And maybe there's something that really works for you. Or at the end of it, you might decide that owning a franchise isn't the best option for you. Or maybe you want to start your own business. But at least you're learning about different business models. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about top franchise models for real estate professionals. So anyways, when inventory is low and rates are high, uh, it makes real estate tough sometimes, right? It, transactions are down big time. I've been in real estate since I was 20 years old. I'm now 46. Uh, and I've lived the ups and downs of the market. And that's when I discovered business ownership, uh, which I think works well with real estate professionals because your time is flexible. Wouldn't it be nice to own a business where you had some more predictable income? Uh, and so today we're going to discuss all about owning a business, SBA financing, how to, how to identify the right business model for you, and so much more. Real estate could be a roller coaster, as we know. We talked about it on the other slide. So really, how do we bring stability into our lives? How do we bring in that cash flow on a monthly basis? So we're not uh, reliant on the day-to-day -day of trying to close that transaction, right? It's, we're always as good as our last transaction. So owning a business might be a great complement to what we do in, in the real estate world. Many of us out here own rental properties. We're looking for different streams of income. Well, a business might be just that per perfect stream for you. About myself, I have 25 years of lending experience. Uh, I have a website called businessownershipcoach.com. I own a few businesses, uh, also California real estate broker, uh, SBA loan advisor, and I host two podcasts. So I'm, I'm involved really today. Mostly what I do is, is uh, besides investing, is uh, help people identify the right franchise models to invest in uh, and also do a lot of SBA financing, people acquiring, doing business acquisitions. I do all sorts of fun loans. Uh, and I also enjoy helping people go from corporate into uh, owning a business or people that want to diversify and own a business business in their investment portfolio. My mission is to help 10,000 aspiring entrepreneurs become successful business owners, owners over the next 10 years. Uh, I came up with that uh, a while back and through my podcast, through one-on-ones, I'm making a big impact and I hope to help some of you out there that are watching this uh, workshop. So why business ownership? Well, it could provide stable cash flow. Uh, additionally, tax codes favor small business owners. Uh, the people that get taxed the most, right, are W-2 employees uh, or high paid uh, 1099 uh, workers, independent contractors, consultants, et cetera, like real estate professionals. If you don't have tax write-offs, you're paying a lot in taxes. So owning a business, uh, we've done some segments with CPAs, Section 179, and bonus depreciation could be your best friend as a business owner. Uh, you can build equity and create a sellable asset by owning a business, right? You create equity by uh, having a business that generates a lot of cash flow and uh, seller's discretionary earnings are strong. You're going to be able to eventually hopefully sell that when you want to exit as part of your succession plan. You can uh, leverage existing relationships. Many of us out there through our real estate background have tons of contacts. Many of these people are maybe working a corporate job or they're transitioning. Now uh, you can help them identify uh, through whatever business you get into different opportunities. So for example, you could own a uh, painting company you could own a flooring company. You could own a, a business that totally complements your real estate business, or you could own a business in a totally different sector, health, wellness. There's really about uh, over 3,000 franchise models out there. So there's a lot of 
and that's not including all the mom and pop type businesses. So there's a lot of opportunity out there, period. Um, but really, at the end of the day, we want to build a business that's not reliant on yourself 100%. You want to build a system and a process where uh, you build a machine that's making you money. What are the best opportunities for real estate professionals? Well, uh, I like the boring businesses, recession resilient businesses, uh, complementary businesses to real estate professionals could be in the home service uh, area, such as painting companies, HVAC companies, restoration companies. Um, you can utilize high leverage SBA financing, which can fund up to 90% of the total cost. SBA is probably the best financing tool out there in the business space. You can do rent replacement deals. Uh, you can um, do business acquisition where you get seller financing. So there's a lot of ways to use SBA to really limit the amount of out-of-pocket expenses that you come out with for your equity. We call it an equity injection, or, or many of us would say a down payment. Uh, you can also do a lot of cross referrals between your real estate business and your operating business. So if it's a painting company, most people that are getting ready to market and sell their home, they're painting their houses, right? You can do some promotions to really generate business. Both of these businesses could be uh, working side by side to generate more business for each sector. In the franchise research process, really, we start with uh, creating a, a thesis or a business model that's right for you. And how do we go about doing that? We go about doing that by we have if any of you are familiar with the disc profile, we use kind of a disc profile, but for business, we call it a business assessment or an entrepreneurial assessment. We start there and then we go, in, the next phase is really, you know, what what are we working with, right? Like if, if we have very limited cash or maybe we have a lot of money, or maybe we have a an old retirement that we can roll over and utilize that as the down payment or the equity injection for SBA. So we really want to, First, figure out based on the the business assessment and the conversation. We have a questionnaire that we use to identify what business models might be the best for you. Some of you are great promoters. Some of you are more introverted. Some of you have really good executive skills. Some of you guys have good leadership skills. So we're we're dialing in that. We're also dialing in what we can work with for capital uh, in conjunction with possibly SBA financing. Some people out there have large retirement accounts that they don't realize they might be able to roll over with the ROBS plan. Um, so from there, then what we do is we uh, do research and we figure out what are some of the business models that would best fit with your unique skill set, your capital, your time frame, your lifestyle desires, all that in conjunction. And then we do a review of anywhere between seven to nine different business models. Uh, from there, we usually like for you to talk to two or three different business models. So you would get introduced to the franchisors and you would have conversations on the business models that best intrigue you. The reason why we like for you to have multiple conversations is because we find that the, the, the business model you think you're going to like is sometimes it's that third one that you weren't sure of that you actually like the business. Cause remember, you're not going to be the one painting the fences, uh, you're not going to be the one installing uh, flooring. You're the owner of the business. So it's what are you doing as the owner? How do you run the business? How's, how does the business scale? And this is all the, the really important thing. So a lot of people come in thinking, oh, I'd love to own a smoothie place. But really, do you want to deal with that many employees? Do you want a brick and mortar location? A lot of the business models we have don't really require a brick and mortar location. There's well over 3,000 franchises out there. And so there's a lot of industry that you might not be we always think of the subways the jersey mike subs the chick flays well there's a lot of other business models out there so after you do the introductions each of the franchisors have their own discovery process there's multiple steps to really understand the business model most of the home service franchise model so like the painting companies right they grow by hiring more painters and getting another truck hire um and some of the business models, in, in fact, use a subcontractor model. So you don't even need to hire the painters. You're, you're sub, subbing that out. So all these different franchise models and business systems have a little bit unique business models. And as you're doing your exploratory uh, introductory calls, you're going to get a deep dive on these business models. You're going to get a much better understanding. I find through this process, you're going to really, um, it'll open your eyes to what's out there because 
there's a ton of different business models and you would never think about how these business models grow and become successful. So a lot of the businesses, business models we're showing today are recession resilient businesses such as HVAC companies, drain cleaning companies, right? These are, these are not uh, wants, they're needs. So like you're, if you live in the desert and your air conditioning goes out and it's 120 degrees out, you need your HVAC fix, right? And uh, the service-based businesses in general are relatively low overall investment uh, with quicker ramp up and potentially higher profit margins uh, than the tr traditional build outs, like a restaurant, for example, right? You might be in, in the restaurant a million or two million, and it's going to take a lot to recoup your initial um, equity injection into the deal. So um, as you're going through your due diligence process, there's there's multiple steps uh, to get through that diligence process. And the franchise companies themselves, they don't necessarily, just because you're willing and able, doesn't mean they're going to award you the franchise. It is a two-way street, so you want to find a good fit. They don't want to bring people into the business model that will not do well because right, that's a reflection on them. They, they do well when you do well. Uh, so they're really looking for candidates that fit their mold, mold, and just like you're going to be looking for a business model that works for you, and you can grow that business. So you go through the steps. You have a initial call, which is just a deep dive on the, on the business model. Uh, usually, the next call is uh, territory unit economics, uh, kind of a deeper dive. Then you progress your way down to validation calls. That's where you call other people that own that business in different markets. And you ask a lot of questions. Now, we have a lot of checklists and templates to help people as they're going through this process to, to figure out what business model might make the most sense. Uh, and then ultimately, you're working your way towards a discovery day. And that's where, at that time, the franchisor uh, would potentially award you the franchise and then uh, we always recommend you have the franchise agreement reviewed by a franchise attorney. Uh, and then at that point, your funding's already lined up and then you're making your decision. Does this does this business really resonate with what my lifestyle wants, wants are? Does it resonate with my goals of business growth? And so that's really the process, the journey we take people through. And so my background is both uh, in the franchise world and SBA financing. Um, and also, you know, prior to that, uh, a real estate broker for many years. So I understand what you may be looking for. And I believe there's a business for everybody. And I do believe that everyone should own a small business, whether you want to keep your real estate job or your W2 job. Uh, I believe that everybody should own a business, uh, the, the tax benefits, uh, mo having multiple streams of income. Uh, I know you know, sometimes it's a few months between between paychecks uh, as real estate agents, uh, especially in this type of market where there's limited inventory. Things are still moving pretty well. Uh, but I know that supplementing and having a business. Now, I do want to bring up the fact that there's not many very passive businesses where you're just going to invest money and it's going to run itself. This is um a much more in-depth investment than owning a rental property where you have a property manager. So I want to be clear on the, on that fact that you you have to have the skill sets, you have to have the desire. Uh, but most franchises that you'd be looking at are what we call semi-absentee. Semi-absentee me, means you're working on the bit on the business, not in the business. And generally, that's 15 to 20 hours per week. Uh, usually, in the beginning, you're going to spend a little bit more time. It's going to be a little bit more, you know work up front to get the business running to get the right employees and so why i like franchising so much is because the franchise world is is all about um systems and processes an established franchise brand there's there's all sorts of franchises right there's emerging franchise brands which have you know anywhere from two to ten to twenty locations but then there's really established franchises where they could have three hundred 400 franchisees throughout the nation. So depending on your risk level and the different sectors you're interested in, you're going to evaluate the pros and cons. One of the pros of a newer franchise brand is 
they have wide open territory. So you can lock up a larger territory, which if that franchise does well and you grow, uh, you're going to be in a, in a good position versus uh, a very established brand. Uh, they might have very limited territory. Um, so those are the kind of considerations. Established brands can have a lot more infrastructure, usually marketing, lead generation, uh, depending on what type of business you are, you are interested in. Today, we're going to actually show you a few business models just to wet your feet. Um, but going back to like how this all works is we just like to have initial discovery call. You can always go to bookwithbo.com. Um, just have a basic conversation about business ownership. We have business models that are simple like vending. Uh, that's not a franchise. It's actually a business opportunity uh, where they actually place the machines for you. They guarantee you a certain amount of vends. Uh, you, it's, it's said that you spend about one hour per week uh, working per machine in that business. Um, so there's really simple businesses. Some, some people are doing businesses like that and they're getting their children involved or a spouse. Um, and also the beauty of that is going back, uh, I recommend anybody looking into business ownership that's paying a lot in taxes, look at section 179, look at bonus depreciation. These are all things that can also help not only from making more revenue, but keeping more of that other income that you're making by having a lot of tax uh, uh, write-offs with your operating business. So that's another um, plus for right there. We're gonna go into a couple um, rounds of some business models. They're going to be short clips, short little video clips on some business models, and then we'll circle back. So, What you need to understand is as you're looking for your own franchise, one of the things you have to ask yourself is, how committed do I want to be? Am I going to be there every single day? Am I going to be there half time? Or am I going to hire somebody to manage this business for me? So wellness is actually the leading segment in the pet industry. The pet industry is growing like crazy. Um, it is projected to be a $277 billion industry by 2030. So the three reasons why we're considered low risk, and I'm going to obviously go deep in each one of these. Number one is because of who we are. Number two is because of the industry that we're in. And then number three would be why we're different in this industry. Customers are, I think, our biggest organic marketing tool. Nine out of 10 people take a picture of their food because our food has that wow factor. Nobody wants you to fail. They want to see you succeed. And I think that's, I think it's awesome. If I were to tell somebody that's interested in a franchise and maybe you've worked in corporate America and you've never worked for yourself, it's hard and it's awesome. You know what I mean? Like it just gives you this sense of purpose and you like wake up and you're like, yeah, let's do it again. What are we doing today? <laughs> I just want to give everybody an overview of some of the business models. That's that's just really like a little fraction. Uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of different business models. And what we really do is we take a kind of a systematic approach by using the business assessment and going through our questionnaire to, kind of, to match you with the business models that might make the most sense for you. And, and that's just not on a financial aspect. It's also your goals and lifestyle. Uh, sometimes you have a spouse involved. So we, we put all that into the works and then figure out what business model. And and during this process, it's really a discovery process. So I always tell people that, that, look, it doesn't cost you any money in the beginning to go through these business models. And maybe there's something that really works for you. Or at the end of it, you might decide that owning a franchise isn't the best option for you. Or maybe you want to start your own business. But at least you're learning about different business models. Kind of to round uh, round off the session here, um, you know, franchise startups like we were showing today, uh, you can you can borrow anywhere from the eighty to ninety percent. Typically, the the franchises that are under under three hundred thousand all in. When they say their investment range, their investment range is usually uh, franchise fee, working capital, um, your truck, or at least your lease on the truck if you need a small location the lease for the first few months, employee salary. So that is your investment range. So your, your investment range is say 200,000 um, and it's eligible, we could take you to a, a bank that will finance 90% of that, which means roughly you're gonna come in with about $20,000 of uh, down payment or equity injection. And then the rest would be financed with an SBA loan. SBA loans are usually when it's just a business, there's no real estate involved. It's a 10 year term. 
Uh, you can you can bring in a partner that owns less than twenty percent. They could be a, a, a an investor in the deal with you. If they own less than twenty percent, they don't have to go on the loan. You can also get gifts from family members. You could potentially use an old retirement account and do a Rob's rollover plan and use that as your your equity injection in conjunction with an SBA loan. Some people have enough money in their old retirement accounts where they could just fund the whole business themselves. Um, but really, what I would encourage everybody who's interested, you can go to businessownershiplaunch.com, businessownershiplaunch.com forward slash go, and just fill out that questionnaire to get started. Um, and, and that's going to help us identify the right business models. Then you would, you'd schedule a, a discovery call with me at bookwithbo.com. That's bookwithbo.com. Or you just do it backwards and just uh, book a discovery call. We can talk about it. Some of you out there are looking for business acquisitions and not a franchise startup. That's perfectly fine. I can help you with the SBA financing. How I help in the SBA world is I work with a lot of the banks. Uh, I know how to navigate. I know which banks will do what type of deals. I know how to structure, how to get seller to do some seller carrybacks, some seller financing. So if you were buying an existing business, for example, and it was a million dollars of total cost, the loan would cover up to 90%. So they would cover a $900,000 loan. You would need 10% equity injection. Well, the seller can carry back some of that equity injection um, with some requirements. So we have people buying these million dollar businesses with as little as $25,000 out of pocket. Now they have to obviously have good credit, good borrowing characteristics, but there's a lot of ways to get really creative on structuring the deals uh, with SBA financing. Uh, generally, you need a 680 credit score or better. Um, sometimes 660 is fine. So relatively good credit. Um, no recent you know, uh, negatives like BKs or anything in the past few years. Uh, it's really common sense uh, underwriting. They're, they're uh, super aggressive. I helped a guy. He bought a painting company, a, a, a painting franchise startup. Uh, one of the brands we work with called That One Painter. Uh, his his an all in investment I think was one hundred fifteen thousand or one hundred twelve thousand. Anyways, for like twelve thousand uh, dollars, he was able to get into this business. Uh, we, and we, in that deal, we had about thirty five thousand dollars of working capital to help him getting get up and running. So you can transition and go full time bi- uh, into the business, and we can build in working capital. Many people like to keep their other job or business. Many of us out here are real estate professionals. So obviously you have a flexible schedule. So really it's about aligning and finding the right business, doing enough discovery and then putting all this together and then, um, you know, going through and doing all the due diligence and making sure this is something you want to do. But if you're interested, feel free to go to businessownershiplaunch.com forward slash go fill out that input form. It's going to walk you through. It's going to ask you about uh, what industries you're interested, rate them one to 10. That's going to help us as we're going through the process and looking for a business model or business models that best would work for you. And there's a lot. And I just showed you just a sampling today. So anyways, we do workshops all the time. Uh, but anyways, you can always go to my name, which is boextein.com. And on the top right, there's an events tab. Feel free to plug in to any of the events. They're, they're usually always free, uh, hopefully educational. We have one coming up strictly on SBA. We have another one coming uh in June, June 29th, I believe, which is the Business Ownership um, Summit, which is going to have multiple speakers, different franchisees, uh, franchisors talking about their brands, CPA, all the things you probably want to know if you're serious about getting into and owning a business. So anyways, have a great day. Thanks for joining us and uh, hopefully talk to you soon. Bye-bye.